already in a late phase with a, a lot of demand and pressures on resources. Mm. So the, it could backfire into either some sort of new asset inflation and burst, or it could backfire mm. into some inflation upturn. Are we in a place uh, with markets, Brendan, where a neutral tone from Jerome Powell and a divided FOMC is seen as hawkish? Well, there is this sort of bad cop, good cop uh, situation with President Trump and the uh, fact that the Powell Fed uh, increased rates last year and has been quite slow in bringing, bringing them down sets them up as the bad cop. But in many ways, I, I, I see the president and his Fed chief as being on the same page, but they, they both have the objective of extending this cycle and not seeing any upset before the 2020 elections. And the thing is, uh, in China, we also have a weakening economy, economy there, um, and also very tentative moves for, from China. What, what do you make of those to pop up uh, the economy? Um, you know, we've had some pretty bad data out, but then the moves to cut short-term borrowing, the, the markets, you know, th they took it in their stride. They, they didn't think of it as a major move. At least that's what it looks like this morning. Well, what we all have to learn, and, we, and the markets uh, may be ahead of a lot of us, is that just because central banks are injecting some liquidity or cutting rates to a small extent, doesn't by any means uh, have the implication they're going to be successful. These small rate moves may be dwarfed by bigger cyclical forces at this point, and that's particularly true in China, but it may also be, turn out to be the case in the global economy that central banks with the small moves that are undertaking, or even if they were a bit bigger, couldn't turn the tide round. Brendan, speaking of injecting liquidity and away from monetary policy, uh, the stunning moves in the repo rate have really caught all our attention this week. And we have seen uh, the Fed a few times uh, do these repo operations that it used to do regularly uh, before the financial crisis. But questions being asked over whether a more permanent fix is needed. Do you realistically see uh, linked to this issue that the Fed might sometime soon uh, announce an expansion of the balance sheet? I don't see that what's required here is an expansion of a balance sheet. What, what is required is some evolution away from trying to run interest rate targeting based on the fixing rates on excess reserves that are paid to the holders of these and getting back to what was the system before 2008, managing the Fed funds market essentially through controlling the quantity of reserves coming into the market. And under that former policy, which is orthodox central bank policy, you did get big swings day to day or week to week on the amount of excess reserves in the system. So I, I would see that as what they have to get back to, but it doesn't mean opening the floodgates to new QE or bigger balance sheets on, yeah. a, on a permanent basis. Okay, thank you so much. Brendan Brown, Senior Fellow at the Hudson Institute and the Public publisher of Monetary Scenarios. Thanks for your time. And we are almost an hour into the cash equity trading session here in Europe, and we are seeing a third day of green on the screen, up two tenths of a percent on the stock 600. Meanwhile, we've seen uh, the 10-year Treasury yield drop some 12 basis points this week, 178 handle. This is Bloomberg. Are you... I can find and find my car From a Mini to a Jaguar Good car buying from findandfundmycar.com is the place where you can find quality used cars from trusted dealers rated by you and where you can fund your car with finance to fit your budget. It's feel good car buying all in one place. You Moving from one rental home to another is so expensive. Last time, we had to pay hundreds to move in, the first month's rent... And then, a big deposit. With Romans, it doesn't have to be like this. It, it doesn't. doesn't. At Romans, you really can move in from just £36, plus your first month's rent. And that's it. Nothing more to add. Move in from just £36, plus your first month's rent. With Romans. No deposit. No problem. 
Romans, your trusted local property experts at romans.co.uk. Conditions and monthly fee apply. From the financial capital of the world, 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter, this is Bloomberg Radio. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. What we're now seeing for the first time is this facade of absolute unity beginning to break down in the EU. We expect that there will be some type of slowdown recession beyond 2019. The European banking system, although recovering, hasn't recovered and there are areas of fragility. We've seen this before, trade talks that lead nowhere and then tariffs. We just swing from one to the other and markets get caught in the middle. Bloomberg Daybreak Europe with Anna Edwards and Matt Miller on Bloomberg Radio. Good morning from London. I'm Anna Edwards. And from the expectant German capital of Berlin, I'm Matt Miller. Expectant because you're waiting for news on a, a climate package from yes, the German government. Yes, we're not government. having a baby. We will, we, we, we will. I'm glad you said we. We'll, uh, we'll talk about that uh, um, in a moment. The, the climate, not the baby, that is. Let's talk about what's going on on the markets then. The stock 600 up by two tenths of 1%. The FTSE 100, a real underperformer, down by three tenths of 1%. And of course, that's the negative correlation with what's going on in FX markets. The pound is up by four tenths of a percent following a strong rally yesterday. More positive mood music, comments from Jean Claude Juncker lifting the UK currency, uh, lifting the currency. Uh, and in fact, m- meaning that we're on course for a very strong run of weekly gains for the pound, the most impressive run of weekly gains since January, I believe. Uh, so we see the FTSE 100 reacting negatively to that. The uh, normal negative correlation seems to apply. FTSE futures, sorry, US futures are positive, up by two to three tenths of one percent for the major indexes. Interesting to see the oil price edging higher as well, up by just over one percent on WTI 58.82. Some of the most recent comments by Iran uh, igniting a little more more geopolitical tension into that price. The U.S. 10-year yield, 1.77%, so that's a little bit lower than the uh, previous session. The dollar as a whole, fairly flat. We did see some weakness uh, to the dollar, and in fact, the Bloomberg dollar index showing it's down an eighth of a percent, but the uh, the regular DXY is fairly flat this morning. As I say, the pound is stronger. We also see a little movement in the euro, up by one-tenth of a percent. Matt? Yeah, let's talk about that pound strength this morning. It's affecting um, the markets, obviously, because the FTSE is down while everything else is little change right now. Will Hobbs joins us. He's the CIO at Barclays Investment. And Will, let me first ask your take on, you know, Jean-Claude Juncker says a a deal can be reached, but the markets seem to really believe that um, no Brexit ain't going to happen now. Is that a good bet to make? Yeah, morning again, Matt. And I think this tells us a bit about positioning, doesn't it? And I think, you know, sentiment in sterling has been depressed for a while. A lot of institutional uh, investors around the world, you know, we've talked about um, something called, you know, an embarrassment discount. Uh, in a sense, uh, people are just, uh, it's too difficult to call. So people have hedged their position in sterling. Uh, and there may be, you know, there's this sort of, you know, maybe institutional underweight uh, to UK assets in general. Um, and is that, as a result, any little bit of news? And it is a little bit of news. Um, prompts these quite extreme moves we wouldn't uh, we we don't pretend to have uh, a uh, clearer vision of what comes next in the brexit saga than anyone else well, yeah well we'll see what the supreme court says where we uh, will in, in the first instance an embarrassment discount is that a thing I don't know. I think I just made it up. <laughs> it's a yeah. thing now. Yeah. It's a thing now. Your underweight guilt, though, uh, this is more to do with the global situation, you say, then, rather than the specific UK. And that's the thing with guilt. It's hard to uh, disentangle the global from the local. Yeah, and it's, it's a problem for um, for all of, all the markets, in fact. You know, that, that global factor versus the domestic factor. And the long end, obviously, does tend to dance more to, to the tune of global factors, particularly those born in the US, than uh, uh, maybe domestic factors most of the time. Uh, and I think, you know, uh, the point from us really is that um, the global government bond market um, is looking at the world uh, with far too much of a glass half empty um, uh, approach. Uh, there's this kind of extrapolative pessimism going on, you know, the secular stagnation, Japanization, too much de- de- debt narratives have raised their ugly heads uh, yet again uh, in this cycle. They went away for a little bit during 2016 17 and they've now returned with a vengeance. Uh, and that's really informing uh, bond market pricing, in our opinion. And uh, I th- we suspect that a more uh, even assessment of the prospects for the world economy might see bond yields higher. Excuse me, I thought I was going to sneeze. Um, Will, listen, I want to ask you about the euro carry trade. I've been reading a lot about um, what drove the 
the, the crunch that we saw, the, the, the shot up that we saw in the repo market. And, uh, you know, people were talking about corporate taxes had to be paid and there were a lot of treasuries out. And uh, also I thought it was interesting that it coincided with the Saudi oil spike, um, 60 to $72. They usually are a big supplier of cash to money markets, so that was an issue. But uh, someone said maybe it was because so many people on the street are – uh, borrowing euros to buy dollar assets, the euro carry trade, because the spread makes so much sense. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's not one we're chasing at the moment. Um, I think, you know, it, it, at the moment, those kind of, you know, big currency plays, um, they're not necessarily for us. We don't have major currency positions in our tactical portfolio right now. We did think about a sterling trade uh, a month ago, but we uh, uh, we lack the conviction uh, necessarily to do it. Uh, now, as it turned out, it might have been a good trade, but it's not one that we necessarily regret not taking advantage of. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, the funding market story is very interesting um, at the moment. Um, it looks like the Fed can get on top of it, um, and they are, uh, but there may be, need to be more sustained action by the mm. Is this going to have an impact on Treasury markets then, because is an, an issuance by the U.S. government. I was reading uh, in, in follow-on from Matt's question. You know, we've seen this big spike up in repos, and then the swaps market seems to be signalling a little less demand for treasuries because there's a nervousness that if you can't fund, the, if you can't get rid of those treasuries in the uh, uh, in the repo market, then maybe you don't want to hold on to them, or maybe your balance sheet regulation says you can't. Is this something that the U.S. government or the FOMC is going to have to take some action around? Do you think? Yeah, it's really interesting, Anna. I mean, what we've seen in the bond market is quite extraordinary in the last couple of weeks uh, in general. You've seen that very sharp move uh, higher in yields and then a little bit of a retracement. But that suggests that you want to be very careful about your positioning here. This may not be, and I think the point that we've made about um, the U.S. and global government bond market, uh, you know, for those looking for safety and a shelter from the storm, we suspect that global government bonds are offering, and particularly the you know, more high-quality ones, uh, are offering a period of return-free risk rather than risk-free return. What do you expect from the Chinese here uh, in the midst of this trade war? They seem to be giving it some gas, but just not too much. And um, they're surely one, at least one of the engines of the global economy. Yeah, I mean, there's a bit of a pushing on the string story here, isn't there, Matt? I think, you know, one of the problems that you've got in the Chinese uh, loan market is that Chinese banks, understandably, um, there's a decision, when it's a decision to lend to state or private sector companies, uh, the implicit state guarantee just makes that a very uneven playing field. doesn't matter if the, uh, you know, return on asset or interest rate coverage uh, story looks much better in the private sector, the return story. Uh, it's just that there's zero potentially risk in lending to state companies. And so this is the problem that China has in a sense that the private sector is being squeezed out. The trade war is definitely playing a role, but I think probably that domestically led story is probably a bit more important to consider. Now, how they get over that, well, it's, a, you know, it, it's some way away, but that to us is sort of teaching us a little bit concerned about the long-term prospects for the Chinese economy. You know, we wouldn't, we'd be wary of those who sort of extrapolate you know, the recent 20 years of strength into the next 50 and assume that China's century is simply a matter of, uh, a matter of course and just uh, you know, bet on it. Uh, bet on it uh, with all your money. Uh, we don't think that's the case, and we think that the policymakers that are assuming as much may be underestimating um, that uh, uh, some of the sort of policy moves that China is making domestically. That's interesting. Seems a good day to ask whether India becomes the new darling for the investment community. Then, given we've seen such a rally in the Sensex and in the rupee, with um, these, these government measures to cut corporation tax and a host of other measures over the last three or four weeks, in fact, from the, from the uh, Indian government. Will I mean, in terms of emerging markets, that that's clearly got to be one that that looms large. Yeah, I mean, there's a number of interesting stories uh, in emerging markets, Anna. I mean, I think India has got its own problem. I mean, it's still got sort of big banking sector problems to uh, to work through. So there are a number of things that investors have to get their heads around, uh, including kind of the access to markets themselves. For us, I mean, in terms of our kind of long-term access to markets, we're still um, pro uh, the more liquid, deeper markets of Korea, Taiwan. Right now, those are very difficult spots. But if you do want to take a sort of, you know, a, a, a more hair-raising cyclical bet, then it's interesting the degree of current correlation that Korea and Taiwan exhibit with the ISM manufacturing. You know, they're very closely linked to the U.S. business cycle. They tend to uh, almost exaggerate what's going on in the U.S. business cycle. So if this is a bottom in the ISM manufacturing, and that's one of the theories you could have, mm. uh, then you could see, you know, this might be one for those who are willing to take a, uh, you know, a bit of a more hair-raising cyclical punt. I right. Guess. Yeah, we've certainly talked about that, whether the manufacturing downturn is bottoming out. Uh, had a great chart on that in TV. We won't endeavour to find that for radio, though. Will, thanks very much. Will Hobbs, CIO at Barclays Investment Solutions.
All right, let's get over to Leanne Garens now for your latest global news headlines. Leanne? Good morning, Matt. Chancellor Angela Merkel's specially convened climate cabinet has been working through the night to deliver a groundbreaking climate package. Bloomberg's Patrick Donoghue says the coalition is struggling to agree on details, including a carbon tax or carbon pricing. The goal is to get Germany back on track to fulfill its goals to reduce greenhouse gases as part of its Paris Agreement commitments, which the country is set to miss next year. The central outcome of the talks may be a cap-and-trade system on emissions from heating and transport. Merkel's government will have a lot to answer for as thousands of protesters across Germany prepare to demonstrate on Friday to fight climate change. In Berlin, Patrick Donahue, Bloomberg Daybreak, Europe. Iran has warned that a strike against the country could lead to, quote, all-out war. That's according to the nation's foreign minister speaking to CNN. He denied Tehran's involvement in the attacks against Saudi Aramco, saying he hoped to avoid a conflict, but adding Iran was very serious about defending itself. A new report from Amnesty International accuses a Hong Kong police of torture and of beating protesters in custody. Bloomberg's Karen Lee says this could fuel further unrest. Police used unnecessary and excessive force in making arrests, the report said, as the city braces for another weekend of protest following a summer of unrest that has rattled its economy. Police said Thursday that there are stringent guidelines on use of force and that officers are required to use a high level of restraint at all times. In Hong Kong, Karen Lee, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. And China's tensions with the U.S. might not be showing many signs of easing, but Beijing is winning some allies. For the second time in less than a week, a nation has switched relations from Taiwan to the mainland. Kerry Bass has severed ties with Taipei. It comes amid targeted spending from China on transport and utility infrastructure in the Pacific. Global News 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerens. This is Bloomberg Anna. Leanne. Thanks very much. Now with your morning sports news, here's William Essler. It was a mixed start for the British sides in the Europa League last night. Manchester United, Arsenal and Rangers all picked up victories. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's side beat Astana 1-0. Teenager Mason Greenwood got the only goal of the game. Last year's beaten finalists Arsenal started their campaign with a 3-0 win at Antrank Frankfurt. Shea OJ's first half strike at Ibrox saw Rangers edge past Feyenoord 1-0. And Celtic picked up a point away to Wren after a 1-1 draw. But Wolves lost 1-0 at home to Braga. Japan will become the first Asian nation to host the Rugby Union World Cup when they get the tournament underway this morning. Russia are their opponents in Tokyo. England are among the favourites to lift the trophy, but don't start until they play Tonga on Sunday. Formula One Drivers' Championship leader Lewis Hamilton resumes his battle with Ferrari's Charles Leclerc this morning. They're among those taking part in practice ahead of this weekend's Singapore Grand Prix. Leclerc has won the last two races in Belgium and Italy. Let's get the U.S. sports now with Pete Fox. Major League Baseball, the Yankees win the AL East. Their first time doing that since 2012. It was win number 100 as they shellac the Angels 9-1. Braves win the NL East after a 5-4 win over the Phils for Mike Soroka. Aaron Nola takes the loss. Red Sox a 5-4 win in Boston at Fenway over the Giants. Eduardo Rodriguez strikes out 10, allowing just two hits over six innings for his 18th win. And the Blue Jays, an 8-4 win over the Orioles. Thursday night football in Jacksonville. Jags get their first win, demolishing the Titans 20-7. And Pete Fox, Thatcher Bloomberg, NBC World Sports Update. Thanks very much for that, Pete. Still ahead on Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Chaos in Parliament. Bloomberg columnist Andreas Kluth argues it looks more like liberty. We'll get the perspective from Germany on what's going on in UK politics. That coming up uh, shortly, of course. Uh, the domestic politics and the domestic legal story around the Supreme Court, part of the Brexit narrative. Also, we focus in on Jean-Claude Juncker's comments in the last 24 hours. They pushed a pound up after hours here in London yesterday. And once again this morning, 125.62, up three-tenths of one percent for cables. This is Bloomberg. This is the story of a very special woman. In a matter of seconds, she turned herself into a great mathematician or an entrepreneur. Her knowledge was and still is. She could also make monsters disappear, especially those that lurked in the shadows under the bed. 
Once, this woman put back together a teenage girl's broken heart, which had been shattered in a thousand pieces, just by giving her a bear hug. She masqueraded as a regular person at work, but as a superhero at home. Everyone knows her as Gabriella. I still call her mom. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need to help, complete with tips and resources, at aarp.org slash caregiving. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Interactive Brokers Premium Technology and Automation provides clients with lowest cost access to global markets. Access stocks, options, futures, forex, fixed income, and ETFs on over 125 markets in 31 countries and 24 currencies. Fund your account in multiple currencies and trade assets denominated in multiple currencies from a single account. Learn how Interactive Brokers minimizes your costs to maximize your returns at ibkr.com slash yib. Right now, Doctors Without Borders medical teams are operating in some of the most remote and dangerous corners of the world. When front yards become front lines, at the crossroads of conflict and epidemic, where there are no hospitals, that's where we operate. Your response is critical to our response in places where few others will go. That's where we operate. Learn more at doctorswithoutborders.org. Influential conversations from Bloomberg Television. Here's Alex Steele. Another company at the forefront of sustainable fashion is Allbirds, an environmentally friendly footwear company. The eco-friendly sneakers are made from renewable, sustainable materials like wool, sugar, and tree fiber. Joining me now from San Francisco is Jolie Zwillinger, Allbirds co-founder and co-CEO. Can you talk a little bit to us about how you make a product people want that work, that's profitable, and also be very sustainable? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a related thing. You know, we started the company because we saw this opportunity that this enormous industry in footwear, which emits, as, as you were noting, a huge amount of the world's global, global, uh, kind of carbon emissions. And, uh, and we saw that as a result of this, everyone was moving faster, cheaper materials as quick as they can and just slapping a big logo on the side. And so we actually saw that the alignment of using really premium natural materials that were actually good for the planet uh, and, and making good business for customers was actually a really big opportunity that was being overlooked by some of the big athletic companies and some of the other fashion companies. And so we uh, we take these some really premium materials and, and we actually let them do the work. Mm-hmm. And we design wonderful shoes and, and other products and and these premium materials make it feel super comfortable and, and make it a great product. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg's European headquarters in London, I'm Anne-Marie Hordern with this Bloomberg Radio Business Flash. After what was a busy week of central bank decisions, to say the least, we're seeing modest gains in European equities. Stock 600, the European benchmark, just up under two-tenths of a percent. Similar sentiment to what we saw in Asia trading. The FTSE 100 is down, though, this morning, down two-tenths of a percent. But one of its biggest banks, RBS, is up nearly two percent this morning. This is they named a new CEO, Alison Rose, making her the first woman to head a top UK lender. In foreign exchange, we are seeing, seeing a weaker U.S. dollar against the euro, the yen, and of course the British pound, which is trading at 125 against the U.S. dollar. This comes after optimism. Young Claude Juncker expressing uh, some uh, optimism about a Brexit deal, saying we can maybe reach it by October 31st. Bit of a mixed picture across of bonds, but we are seeing the U.S. 10-year trade at 17 uh, as a handle. And in commodities, iron ore this morning is trading up five Five tenths of a percent, but still under ninety dollars a ton. It was a wild ride for the metal this week, as some questions start to concern about demand growth in iron ore and Brent crude trading around sixty-four dollars a barrel. Some geopolitical risks still coming in to that price of seven tenths of a percent. That's a Bloomberg Radio Business Flash. Now here's Leanne Garrett with more on what's going on around the world. Leanne, good morning, Anne Marie. Two people have drowned in Texas as a remnant of tropical storm Imelda caused major flooding across the state. Authorities say they're have been around 1,000 rescues and some areas could see a meter of rain this week. The
the storms have also flooded parts of southwestern Louisiana. Controversy over President Trump's communications with a foreign leader. The Washington Post reporting an anonymous whistleblower raised concerns over the president's dealings with Ukraine. Now Democratic lawmakers are accusing intelligence officials of stonewalling on details of the complaint. President Trump dismissing suggestions he did anything inappropriate. And a little bit of sunshine on your Friday. Some parts of Britain will enjoy above average temperatures this weekend. It could reach up to 26 Celsius for eastern parts, while the rest of the UK can expect at least the high teens or low 20s. Global News 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg. Bloomberg Opinion, informed perspectives, and expert data-driven commentary on breaking news. It's it is 9.20. Oh, go ahead, Matt. No, well, I yes, have him do. sitting next to me, yes, so I thought I would sense. bring him in. It's 9.20 in the city. Time to check in with Bloomberg Opinion. We're joined by opinion columnist Andreas Kluth, who's writing about a more optimistic way of looking at the political instability, the fragmentation, the Balkan balkanization that we've seen across Europe. Is it Kluth or Klut? Kluth. Okay, I thought I was going to be well, it's pretty Kluth clever. in German, Kluth. There you English. go. All right, so, Andreas, uh, great piece. I just finished it. Um, by the way, readers can check it out, OPIN Go, or look at our website. It does seem like chaos across European parliaments with all of these new parties coming in, especially here in Germany. We have so many weird parties like the Pirates and Die Partei, as you, you point out, but also the AFD and Die right. Linke. Um, the communists are still around. The Greens are doing well. The SPD and the CDU are, are losing momentum. What's going on? Well, uh, what's going on is that a, a big trend far predating the rise of the populist parties uh, has been going on since it started in the 1980s, really. And as you said, it, across Europe, and in fact, I think that Germany is, in fact, not even the most affected trend, but it, it, uh, and the, that trend is fragmentation. So as our societies get more pluralistic, the old left and right blocks break up. And, you know, the smaller groups in Parliament, whether you, you just mentioned some, it could be satirists, it could be vegans, it could be hunters, it could be religious people, whatever, they form their groups. And that makes parliaments much messier. As, okay. As we fra fragment. And, Andreas, that makes things messier. It might make people feel a little unnerved because it's changed. But your argument is that this actually, uh, this is a good thing for democracy. It is a renaissance of representative democracy. I, my argument is that it could lead to that because I'm, I'm going back to a much, much older tradition of James Madison in the Federalist Papers. He was worried that there, he was not worried that there could be too few parties. I'm uh, sorry, he wanted as many parties, he called them factions, as possible because he was worried about a majority oppressing a minority. And in fact, if you look at Europe, you have on one hand chaos states like Spain, where they have the fourth election in four years coming up now because they can't uh, have a, a coalition. But you have these other more worrisome states like Hungary and Poland where, where there are, in fact, where there is not instability, where there are stable majorities, but they're illiberal majorities. So James Madison would say, no, let's have more parties, let's have chaos, and let's have them all arguing because what that does is that the individual representatives in Parliament have to vote their conscience. They have to persuade others. They have to form coalitions, uh, ad hoc coalitions, to keep maybe a minority government in power. And that could lead to good policy, and it is actually more democratic. I get where you're going. It's difficult, though, to come to agreements when we look at, for example, the Germans um, who were trying to put together uh, red green black coalition uh no sorry it was red green yellow the jamaica coalition that's right the fdp the liberals uh the uh, uh cdu and the greens it didn't work out right um what about it didn't work out but it is our future so i but uh, we're, we're looking at this also not working out in spain it's not working out in italy i mean how does it ac ever actually get through that they agree on something I think uh, what, what we're in is the transition. We're in the chaos. We have to get to the other side where we get used to this and, uh, and, and where this becomes the new normal. But I think you have some examples. I think in Denmark, they're already on the other side. They have a long tradition of minority governments, which is absolutely frightening to the Germans because it reminds them of 
the Weimar Republic. But there's only like 500 people living in Denmark, so they can all have their own party. <laughs> but there are more sheep than that. <laughs> and, 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 and it is a very stable country. It does not resemble the Weimar Republic. Look, I did, I'm not saying it's 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 chaotic. I'm saying the it, it is not as bad as you think, and we will get used to it. Mm. And... Uh, members of parliament everywhere will become more interesting and that's what they should become so we don't lose faith in representative democracy we can always fire the representatives but they will rebel against their own parties more often as they did in Britain recently uh, Andreas, yes, we won't, we won't complicate matters by adding Brexit into the conversation but yeah, <laughs> interesting to see whether these whether these, these coalitions manage to give up some of their entrenched positions and find compromises uh, Thanks Andreas, Andreas Kluth you can read more on this and other stories from Bloomberg Opinion at Bloomberg.com slash opinion and on the terminal at OPIN Go When we come back, we'll talk about the expectant Berlin that Matt referred to at the start of the programme another all-nighter for Merkel as she tried to, to hammer out a climate deal. More on that next. This is Bloomberg. With the Bloomberg Business of Sports Report, I'm Michael Barr. Patriots wide receiver Antonio Brown has lost his shoe deal with Nike. A spokesperson for Nike told the Boston Globe Antonio Brown is not a Nike athlete. Brown's former trainer, Brittany Taylor, filed a civil complaint in U.S. District Court in Miami accusing him of sexual assault. Meanwhile, there will be no criminal prosecution against Brown in one of the places where Taylor says he sexually assaulted her, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, during his time with the Pittsburgh Steelers. FIFA President Gianni Infantino has raised hopes that Iran will lift a ban on women entering soccer stadiums before a World Cup qualifying game next month. Attention on the ban intensified when a 29-year-old activist had been detained for dressing as a man to enter a soccer stadium and believed she faced six months in prison. Infantino said now is the moment to change things, and FIFA is expecting positive developments. And that is a Bloomberg Business of Sports report. I'm Michael Barr. In-depth analysis, concise reporting, need-to-know global business news. Around the world and across the markets, Bloomberg connects the dots for decision makers. Stay on top of today's headlines. Follow big breakthroughs in tech. Understand the latest political issues. See how the world's wealthiest are spending their money. Track what's happening in the markets and much more. Subscribe today to Bloomberg, the global standard for business reporting. Get it all at Bloomberg.com slash subscriptions. Are you looking for senior care for your mom or dad but don't know where to start? Hi, I'm Joan London with The Place for Mom. Nobody knows your parent or loved one better than you, and nobody knows senior living better than the experts at A Place for Mom. It's a free service, and we've helped thousands of families find the right place for their mom or dad. There's a place for answers, A Place for Mom. Call today. Call A Place for Mom at 1-800-391-1755. That's 1-800-391-1755. At Romans, you can rent your next home from just £36, plus your first month's rent. No deposit, no problem. Romans, your trusted local property experts at romans.co.uk. Conditions and monthly fee apply. At Jet2.com, we love flying you to new places. Like Provenza, with its beautiful Parga area and Lefkas Island. Or Zadar, set along the dreamy Dalmatian coast. Book now and discover somewhere new for summer 2020. Jet2.com. Friendly low fares. You're in charge of hiring and indeed has solutions. Like online skills tests, which let a candidate show that they are the right hire. And we give you this toy monkey, who will bang its symbols when the right CV appears on your desktop. Okay, there is no monkey. There is no monkey. But there are online skills tests. See why more than 250,000 companies in the UK use Indeed for hiring. Visit indeed.com slash try today to try skills tests for free today. Terms and conditions apply. Strength and things. 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 And strength, strength, strength and things. Strength, strength, strength and things. Strength, strength, strength and things. Strength and things. There's a whole range of strings and things called strings and things, including cheese strings, yollies, and new cheese shapes. Find them all in the cheese and yogurt aisle. Strings and things. University is on the horizon, but which one has what it takes to jumpstart their future? Find the perfect match with the Sunday Times Good University Guide as we grade what each university has to offer. 
from academic rankings to tuition fees, plus so much more. Search the Sunday Times Good University Guide. If you can drive a van that's built in Britain, with class-leading fuel economy on every run, to Middlesex to do some masonry, or to Tunbridge carrying well over a ton, yours is the all-new Vauxhall Vivaro. And you'll be driving a great Brit van, my son. All new Vauxhall Vivaro carries British business. To find out more, search new Vauxhall Vivaro. I want Poppy to play cricket for England. I want Sam to stop screaming. I want Joe to live a little. I want Naomi to live a lot. I want Becky to invent a cure for the common cold. Whatever the future holds for your children, Vitality Life Insurance want to make it happy, healthy and secure. So when you take out our wellness optimizer, you'll get up to 40% off your life insurance premiums. I want the twins to keep on being happy. I just want whatever the twins are on. Just search Vitality Life Insurance. Additional product, minimum monthly premiums and conditions apply. Broadcasting live to London on DAB Digital Radio. To New York, Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 991. To Boston, Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco, Bloomberg 960. And around the globe, the Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Good morning. It's 9.30... Wait, it's 10.30 in Berlin. It's 9.30 in London. Sometimes <laughs> is, I look at the... Right. I have two different clocks in here, and I look at the wrong ones. I guess it doesn't matter what time. The dangers of being overly informed, Matt. But uh, yes, you're correct about the time. It is uh, 9.30 here in London. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. And Matt, we need to check the data. Let's do that. Right now we have, uh, well, we had little change across European equity indexes. The FTSE was the exception. It was falling further than everything else because of the pound strength. Now we have um, the FTSE uh, gaining back, pairing its losses, let's say. Um, right now down two-tenths of one percent or 16 points to 73.40. The CAC and the DAX continue to fall further. The CAC is down uh, 11 points to 56.48. The DAX is down 30 points to 12. 1,427. So watch this space. It seems to be getting worse. In terms of the pound right now, it's coming off its highs of the session. It had uh, been spurred by comments out of Jean-Claude Juncker that the, uh, the possibility of a deal a Brexit deal before October 31st still exists at all. Um, that drove the pound to 125.80. Now it's down at 125.44. Uh, you do see um, the euro pound getting back to the 88 pence level it had been. It was uh, dropping earlier this morning to below that. A euro dollar going for 110.54 and you can buy 108 yen for your dollar. Covering climate now, Bloomberg Radio explores the crucial issue of climate change. Indeed, we've been doing this all week and we'll continue uh, to do this. Right now, I want to bring in Chris Ryder uh, here. He is kind of the point man for our uh, coverage on these all-night German um, negotiations. So, Chris, there's a, there's a so-called climate cabinet. Um, we, we know that this uh, coalition right now is tenuous. They're trying to decide on a, a huge number of important issues. For example, do they stick with the kind of uh, cap and trade um, scheme or do they go to a carbon tax? Um, what about green investment? Could we see tens of billions? Yesterday I heard someone say 40 billion euros in green investment come out in a package today. Yep. Um, what, where do we stand? Well, the talks are still going on. I mean, it's been going on for more than 16 hours now. They've gone through the night. And that shows, um, you know, how difficult and tense and how important Germany is taking these um, negotiations. It's also like, as you said, the coalition's um, survival is on the line. The SPD has said that if they don't reach a deal, if it doesn't go in the way that they um, expect or want, then they could leave the coalition. So uh, a lot riding on these talks. They're still going on, but there are signs that they will reach an agreement. Um, we've got a uh, scheduled press conference with Merkel and her counterpart in the SPD, Schultz, um, for 2.30 this afternoon. So all the details at the latest by then. So that's what's at stake for the government. Good morning to you, Chris, and uh, the, the sort of political backdrop to these talks. So assuming they do come up with some kind of deal, do we know much about what the deal might look like, what the policies will look like from this? 
We have some some inkling. I mean, it's going to touch on lots of sectors. I mean, heating, you know, the building sector in terms of um, promoting energy efficient housing. It's going to put a price on carbon. Um, there's going to be some sort of trade system. They're talking about 30 to 50 euros a ton um, for for the cost of carbon, which will filter down um, to the consumer level and make you know things that we all do like driving um, more expensive, which. Um, for Germany is a major change in terms of policy to actually like load extra um, burden on the auto industry which Merkel as the auto kanzler um, has avoided for for years and years of power and um, so that that's a change in direction the auto industry effect will be something close to watch um, although they may make it easier to operate an electric vehicle, right? right? I, right. I think there's currently a uh, you get a four thousand euro rebate if you buy an electric vehicle. They're they're still incredibly expensive, so um, that money is needed right. by consumers. And there's nowhere to charge them really, right? So. So that yeah. kind of infrastructure build out could be helpful. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, so that's the flip side of it is making sort of conventional combustion cars a little more expensive. There's going to be some sort of quota they're talking about on electric cars, which you know. Incidentally, comes at a time when Volkswagen and Co are rolling out all kinds of electric cars, as we, as we saw. At By the way, what what is um, is there a stimulative motive here? Because the Germans hate to spend money; it like it's against their DNA somehow, um, and. The previous finance minister, Schäuble, was so proud of his black zero of, you know, um, not creating any more debt. Schultz was in this office a couple weeks ago, and he was saying, the economy is fine. We don't need to spend anymore. We already spend enough. Right. But this is – I've heard some people describe this as a stimulus package in disguise. Yeah. I mean – the, the financing of it is sort of um, – it's one of the most tense issues. I mean, um, Lars Klingbaugh from the SPD sort of said, oh, we'll, we'll see if we'll have financing in place. You know, you would think like something like this that's, you know, the German Green Deal, um, Green New Deal, like that it would be a nice cover to like load all kinds of investment and um, push some money into the economy. But it's unclear at this point like how much of this will get to the economy right away. Um, so it, we can't really call it necessarily a stimulus package yet, but it could be, and it would mm. be an opportunity for them to do that. And we'll see whether, in the detail then, whether that points in that direction. Chris, what about aviation? Because I was yep. at a, a, an aviation conference just recently, and a lot of the CEOs talk about how they prefer offsets. They don't like mm. uh, taxes. But on the other hand, some of the aviation companies don't mind them if they think it's going to damage the com competition right. more than it'll damage them. So uh, what's the story there? Yeah, I mean, it looks like that aviation is going to get hit. I mean, in terms of like inner German um, flights, uh, sh sort of really short haul flights, and they're going to. I mean, the promotion is towards getting people to go take trains um, on the other side. So that's you know, there's definitely like a movement a sh a foot to shift that kind of travel towards the train towards Deutsche Bahn. The problem, of course, being that. Deutsche Bahn is so broken. I mean, I haven't taken I haven't taken an on time train in Germany in, in years. I remember when it used to run notoriously on time. It used no the Swiss train system is notoriously on time, and the Deutsche Bahn used to be pretty good when I lived here as a kid. But yeah. I mean, Chris, back me up. It's it's yeah, awful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like uh, Deutsche Bahn hating is sort of you know a new national pastime at Germany. So well, I'm in. Um, <laughs> I'm in. I'd prefer uh, I'd prefer to go to the airport and wait or drive my car down the Autobahn as fast as I want. Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Chris Ryder, uh, they're leading our coverage here. The team, I have to say, has been here all night long, Anna. It is, um, it's a lot of work. Merkel really pushes these people through the paces. <laughs> yeah, not only her team, but the journalistic community. Somebody gets yeah. some sleep. I'm sure everybody makes better decisions that way. Right, let's get uh, the global news flow. Here's Bloomberg's Leanne Gerrans. Good morning, Anna. The pound jumped to, jumped to a two-month high yesterday on positive signals from Brussels. The president of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, has told Sky News a deal over Brexit is possible. I had a meeting with uh, Boris Johnson, the prime minister. This was a rather positive uh, meeting, uh, although the British press was reporting it in the other way. We can, we can have a deal. 
Juncker went on to say no agreement would have catastrophic consequences. The pair had face-to-face -face discussions earlier this week for the first time since the Prime Minister came into office. In Hong Kong, controversy over conduct during recent demonstrations. Amnesty International is alleging the police beat protesters and committed acts that amount to torture. Hong Kong's police wouldn't comment on individual cases, but says it respects the rights of people in custody. Demonstrations are expected to continue this weekend. China's tensions with the U.S. might not be showing many signs of easing, but Beijing is winning some allies. For the second time in less than a week, a nation has switched relations from Taiwan to the mainland. Kiribati has feathered ties with Taipei. It comes amid targeted spending from China on transport and utility infrastructure in the Pacific. And finally, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison is in Washington for a six-day visit to the U.S. He'll hold talks with President Donald Trump on China's growing influence in the South Pacific. Bloomberg's Jason Scott reports. On Friday, Morrison will have a day of meetings with the Trump administration before attending a lavish state dinner in the Rose Garden. Just a second Trump has hosted as president and a first for an Australian leader since 2006. As well as China's geopolitical ambitions in the Pacific Islands, the leaders will also discuss joint efforts to address North Korea's nuclear weapons program. In Canberra, Jason Scott, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerens. This is Bloomberg Matt. Leanne, thanks very much for that. So, we are... Um I mean, I, we, I, I just keep waiting for this uh, German announcement, but it's not going to come till 2.30, so I guess I have a mm. lot of time to kill. You have a lot of waiting around to do then, Matt. In the meantime, we watch Indian assets doing very well, don't we? Up by 5.8% now on India's Sensex. As uh, Narendra Modi says, uh, the historic, that's how he call, what he calls it, historic cut to corporation tax will be a great stimulus to hashtag make in India. He said these things <laughs> on Twitter a little bit earlier on, but certainly having a capture, capturing the investor community's imagination, certainly overnight. Um, we will, when we come back, we'll discuss the week in central banking with Janet Mui, global economist at Casanova Capital. That's coming up next. He's been busy on the central banking front this week. This is Bloomberg. Tom has been a teacher for over 40 years. One day, I think one of the students had asked the question and he didn't remember the answer. And I also noticed that he was letting his class out earlier than they were supposed to let out. I was really starting to worry. Levi and I talked about how it would change our lives, but he was there beside me. When something feels different, it could be Alzheimer's. Now is the time to talk. Visit alz.org slash our stories to learn more. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. More than just a game, baseball is big business. For the chief revenue officer of the New York Mets, this means overseeing complex operations, key financial drivers, and interpreting data to make critical decisions every day. How is your business managing complexity? Cone Resnick can help you improve performance through an integrated business planning strategy that optimizes your data, streamlines processes, and keeps you ahead of the competition. Explore more at ConeResnick.com slash MLB. Cone Resnick, Advisory Assurance Tax. Transform your game. Robert Cohen holds three degrees from New Jersey Institute of Technology. Today, he leads research and development for medical device maker Stryker Corporation. He also helps Stryker recruit top talent from universities like NJIT. If you look at where NJIT students are going, go to a career fair. There are lines of companies that want to get into the career fair, and it's because they see those students as practical, innovative. I can tell you for a fact, because we hire many NJIT graduates, these students can contribute right from the get-go. The guy who reports to me who's in charge of all my implant development, NJIT grad. The guy who reports to me in charge of all my robotics development, NJIT grad. They contribute to the development cycle. They contribute to the testing. We have NJIT graduates in manufacturing. We have NJIT graduates in quality assurance. We have NJIT graduates in our computer science. These students are some of our best. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at storiesofinnovation.njit.edu. Jet2 Holidays, we like keeping things simple. If you do too, our great value all-inclusive holidays are simply perfect. Meals, drinks and snacks are all included in the price. So book now with just a £60 deposit. Jet2 Holidays, package holidays you can trust. Subject to availability and conditions. You're in charge of hiring and Indeed has solutions, like online skills tests, which let a candidate show that they are the right hire. 
And we give you this toy monkey, who will bang its symbols when the right CV appears on your desktop. Okay, there is no monkey. There is no monkey. But there are online skills tests. See why more than 250,000 companies in the UK use Indeed for hiring. Visit indeed.com slash try today to try skills tests for free today. Terms and conditions apply. We could play epic music. Or we could speak in an overdramatic tone. Or even set off fireworks! But that's just not smarty. Instead, we let our offer do the talking. Right now, you can grab 25% off our unlimited data sim. That's just $18.75 a month with no speed restrictions, no credit check, and no long contract to tie you in. Now that's smarty. Just search Smarty Mobile and switch today. It's easy. Offer available for a limited time only. See smarty.co.uk for terms. This one shouldn't take long. Of course, if it had a cover, I might not be bothered. Can't see what's under there. And they'd have chained the back wheel. Would have taken me much longer, especially if the chain's off the ground. Makes it harder to cut. This one doesn't even have a lock on the front. So, in the time I've been talking to you, I've nicked it. Over 9,000 scooters and motorbikes were stolen in London last year. Lock your bike, chain the rear wheel, and cover it to make it harder to steal. Lock, chain, cover. The Met Police. Should we go halves? I'll get this. Let me just get my card. Which was in my pocket. Um... You can't control awkward first dates. But if you temporarily misplace your Visa debit card, you can freeze and unfreeze it on our mobile banking app. Feel in control every day. Lloyd's Bank, by your side. You can only freeze some transaction types, T's and C's apply. I want Poppy to play cricket for England. I want Sam to stop screaming. I want Joe to live a little. I want Naomi to live a lot. I want Becky to invent a cure for the common cold. Whatever the future holds for your children, Vitality Life Insurance want to make it happy, healthy and secure. So when you take out our wellness optimizer, you'll get up to 40% off your life insurance premiums. I want the twins to keep on being happy. I just want whatever the twins are on. Just search Vitality Life Insurance. Additional product, minimum monthly premiums and conditions apply. You're a small business owner and there's nothing small about what you do. That's why Dell Small Business Technology Advisors give you trusted advice and tailored tech solutions like computers with Intel Core processors servers, storage, and networking, plus industry-leading monitors and software. No matter your technology needs, Dell is here to help your small business do big things. Call 0800-085-4878 to speak with an advisor today. That's 0800-085-4878. You don't just live in one room, so why should you Wi-Fi? With Sky Broadband's Wi-Fi guarantee, you'll get Wi-Fi in every room or money back. Perfect for food shopping in the bedroom, gaming in your PJs in the lounge, or streaming sci-fi movies in the kitchen. Get Sky's super fast broadband and Wi-Fi guarantee. £32 a month for 18 months with 19.95 setup. Click on the banner now. Sky Fiber Bearers, Sky Kit required. Refund on boost component of subscription paid during current minimum term up to date of claim. Minimum 3 megabits per second or money back. Prices may change during minimum term. See sky.com slash guarantee. At Little, we're big on baking your breakfast in store. Big on melt in the mouth or butter croissants. Big on flaky pan au chocolat. Big on sticky sweeter than sweet cinnamon buns. All from just 35p at your local Little in-store bakery. Now that's big on quality and always little on price. Subject to availability, selected stores excludes NI. Markets, headlines and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app and TikTok on Twitter. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash.